All right, I'm now going to share some editing tools, color and tonal adjustments in particular for editing your JPEG files in GIMP. And I don't use these tools all that often unless I need to make adjustments after I've done my edits in the raw file itself, because I'm going to make my tonal and color adjustments with the raw file, not when I bring the image in as a JPEG file. Now, if you're shooting with JPEG files, you're going to use these tools more often. So I'm going to quickly give you an overview of how they work and where they are. And then what I recommend doing is using your own images to practice using these tools so you can see how they work. Because if you're just going to use the one image that I'm going to show you throughout this tutorial, it's not really going to give you an indication of how these tools work. So it's best to use your own images to learn how these tools work. I'm just going to give you a rough overview of what's going on in each tool and how to use them. So I'm going to use this turtle image here. And let's go ahead and zoom all the way in. And the color and tonal adjustment tools are up here under the colors menu here. So we're going to concentrate on these tools right here. Again, we're only going to be using 20% of the tools 80% of the time. So there's tons more tools in here that we haven't even covered yet, but you're most likely not going to use them when you're editing images in GIMP. So we're going to start off with color balance, which will allow you to remove color casts or to add a color cast, depending on your creative vision. You can also target your shadows, midtones, and highlights to pinpoint where that edit is going to go. So if I want to add red in the shadows, I can do that with the cyan red slider here and then add cyan if I want to do that. So if I want to add colors into the highlights or remove that color cast, I can do so by targeting the highlights and midtones, etc. All right, let's go to the next one, which is pretty important, which is the color temperature or the white balance as you know it in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. So with the color temperature window here, you're going to type in the original temperature or the Kelvin number that you used or the Kelvin temperature that you used when you captured the image. And then you're going to apply your intended temperature that you wanted for that white balance. So if you shot it at 7000, then you're going to type that in here. And if you prefer 5400, then you'll go ahead and adjust this. Now again, for me, I prefer shooting in raw and nine out of 10 photographers that I know a lot of my students, they prefer shooting in raw as well. And that's based on a poll that I did in our private Facebook group. And 90% of them said, they prefer raw over JPEG. And it's much easier to change the white balance in raw versus JPEG. And that's why I bring it up because you're not necessarily going to get great results by changing the white balance from a large range. So let's say you did 8,000 for the Kelvin originally and you actually meant 4,000. Well, the skin tones, especially with portraits, the skin tones are not going to be that good. It's going to look unnatural. So just keep that in mind when you're adjusting your white balance. Next, we have hue and chroma. Never ever use this one. I don't anyways. Uh, you can adjust your colors here. You can adjust the chroma and then the brightness levels here. Instead, what I like to use is the hue saturation option here. And then I can target or you can target your individual color channels to remove color casts or to change the colors or the saturation or even the brightness levels of those individual color channels. This is the one that I use 99% of the time if I need to make adjustments once the file is inside of GIMP as a JPEG file. All right, next we have saturation, which adjusts the saturation slightly differently than the previous option I just showed you. Again, I never use this one. This is something you're going to have to play with to see if you like the results from this saturation option versus the other one. Next, we have exposure, which is pretty self-explanatory. You're going to increase or decrease the exposure this way. You can also change the black level or the black point with this slider here. Now, a lot of these windows, you're going to notice down here a blending option. So you can come in here and choose a blending mode to adjust how that edit is going to be applied to the image. Not something that I use, but it's there. So go ahead and play around with that to see if you can get something that you like for your particular style. Next, we have shadows and highlights. So we can target the shadows and the highlights to make them brighter or darker. Here's the highlights. 
common. To be honest, I've never used this. I'm not even sure what it's used for, so play around with that. Looks like it's making adjustments to the white point and increasing the radius of that white point and then compressing it to be wider or shorter based on the amount or the intensity for that particular edit. Again, I don't use these at all. I only use the shadow and highlight adjustments in the raw editor or if I want to target the highlights in the shadows, I use the curves tool like we talked about previously. I'm going to adjust my highlights this way versus using those highlight and shadow sliders because again, this gives you more control. And then we have, I think the last one is brightness and contrast again, pretty self-explanatory, brighter or darker, more or less contrast. But again, I prefer the curves tool over this option. So we've already talked about levels and curves and we're gonna use the curves tool more later on in the course and I'll give you some more tips for using that tool. All right, so congratulations on finishing the quick start guide. You now know how to do some basic edits in GIMP. Later in this class, you'll learn some more advanced techniques and pro tips for editing in GIMP. And in the next section, we're gonna dive into layers in regards to how they work in GIMP because they work a little bit differently than they do in Photoshop. The concept is the same, but I wanna give you all the information you need to know about layers in GIMP and how to maximize your use of layers in GIMP. So if you're ready to learn more about layers in GIMP, let's do it. <laughs>